So the the scene is less fire and smoke filled and more water. Um, but uh, whereas we left a scene of uh, a silhouetted figure of anger with fire wreathing him as uh, he watched his records burn, we now uh, see the glowing uh, embers of just thousands of torchlights and lanterns and other illuminating orbs and of magical and, and mechanical uh, origin all across the River Destin. Um, it's a scene that's close to what we saw when we first arrived in Sapphire Harbor at the beginning of this excursion. And looking upon the river, it is still alive with these dancing lights, with music of various origins and, and styles and volume and percussive ability that you would think that if it was coming together in your ears that it would just be, I can't take it, it's too much. But the River Destin and Sapphire Harbor has a way of bringing things together. And it's been that way for thousands of years. It's not really the city. It's the place. It's the location. It's the river. It's the life that flows through here like precious blood through a, a vein. And it carries with it a rich, rich history. And we hear that in the music that's pulsing along the River Destin that's coming across from the boats that are traversing these big, large, paddle-wheeled river boats that are uh, making their way up and down the river. Um, the, the tradition of, the, of this time of year, the Festival of Arias, is to, you know, you find your concert hall, your floating concert hall, and then there's a huge competition to who, who has the best music, who has the best organization of bands, who has the best band, who has the best singer, that sort of thing. And these boats, they travel up and down the river, cascading the, the, the wharfs and the docks and the, and the riverside homes with their music, and the people of the city vote. And then the people who are lucky enough to participate on these vessels get to vote as well on what, you know, what has been what has been their best experience so far. And so that's why, as an audience, we're, as we're listening, we can enjoy it. It's not a cacophony or cacophony as much as it is a a blend of thousands of years of musical history brought to this point. And so it's with that, as we've been kind of passing by boat, you know, boats of various sizes and shapes, that we arrive at a, uh, a, a pier um, that uh, goes out maybe about 25 feet, and it leads up to a boat. And uh, across the boat, we see it uh, carved into the wood paneling across the bow, uh, the Laughing Cleric. And at the side of it, we see a, uh, a silhouetted figure that stands kind of tall and um, has the it's we don't see like a, 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 a they haven't painted any features on this figure but it's just kind of standing tall looks like it's holding a microphone in his hand and then he's got his head kind of tossed back and we see a bit of a glow behind his head and maybe that's the stylized vision of the laughing cleric as uh, the uh, the boat's uh, creator envisioned him and uh, we come back and we look down at the pier and we see four figures standing, um, two rather tall, a uh, slim figure, and then finally a small figure, kind of watching eagerly and bobbing to and fro as, uh, as they look towards the gangplank that leads onto the boat. Now from the boat, we hear music. We hear the sound of people on the boat. And, but we don't see anybody out on the, the walkways outside. You know how with these riverboats, they have the little um, pathways that lead around. Uh, the outside. There's nobody outside, but we can definitely hear the sound of people. We hear the sound of music tuning up, that sort of thing. We hear a viciously fast lick of chords going back and forth, um, and you can almost imagine tongues of flame coming out from one of the windows or something, as probably Alicia and Axburner might be uh, tripping through a chord progression. Um, but uh, there's lights pouring out from the windows, there's the music and everything, and we find our our uh, our band, our reptile overlords. And I think that's how we, we see that the camera comes down and we see your guys kind of standing in formation. Maybe there's like kind of a stylized look to the group. And then right across the bottom, kind of slithering into view, uh, the, 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 the stylized words, reptile overlords. 
the name of your band. And here we are. What uh, what shall you do? You stand before the uh, the boat, uh, the laughing cleric. There's a gangplank that leads onto the boat right here. Uh, it's close enough that you could probably hop over, but you know the the proper way to board a vessel is the gangplank. But who said the reptile overlords are proper? Not me. Well, Grimond, 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 Grimond yeah, but not not me. <laughs> <laughs> not not well, not, not your not your fearless uh, dungeon master. Never. <clears throat> the question is: Wait. Do we try and be sneaky, or do we want to just go in and find out what's going on? Uh, I mean, what reason? We were originally hired to figure out why, where they disappeared to, right? Because a couple of these have been gone a couple of days, and why they aren't where they were supposed to be, yeah. That was our original. Am I muted? No, no, no. I was saying that okay. all I'm seeing is James's forehead or <laughs> Jason's forehead. <laughs> so, based on oh, that, you're, mu you're muted, Ramon. I just noticed you're muted. That's why I said that earlier. The, the mushroom thing no, the forehead. All right, Deacon. Sorry. But go ahead. They, they, they. <laughs> based on that, I feel like sneaking isn't necessarily. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So I don't think, like, Deacon's just going to start walking across to try to figure out what's going on and why people... Are there people? You hear voices and people and stuff, but nobody is out on the walkways outside. You know, normally you'll have... If you look at another boat or whatever, you, you actually, you can look over to the river and you see a boat um, moving by. Um, and as it, as it kind of lumbers into frame, we see the, uh, you know, people kind of hanging off the side, drinking and carousing and <clears> laughing <throat> and stuff. Um, a couple of folks are like, you know, just, you know, playing a, playing an instrument, bongo drums or whatever. So you're seeing people on another boat as it passes by. And then you look back at this boat and you're like, I hear people, but I'm not seeing anything. <clears throat> just the lights coming from the interior. So Deacon at this point is like unamused and really curious as to what in the world's going on with this bunch of hooey? So yeah, no, he he's no nonsense. But trying to figure out what's going on, so I'm just gonna start trotting right up on up unless someone's got either says something really compelling and or physically stops me. So I think Sivlin will follow behind, but before <laughs> stepping out, will disguise up a like face and everything, covering cloak. Okay. Not like just change her face completely. No, no. <laughs> this is for dramatic purposes. Okay. Cloak. She can be like a, a beard <laughs> and an eye patch and a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, All right. Um. Actually, Grimond, Grimond would stop you, but not from going up, but from going up by yourself, because at this point, he is convinced of one of two things. Either there is something nefarious going on, or this is a dreadful, dreadful breach of trust because they abandoned Linka without context or contact. They just boogied. So basically, Grimond would offer you the arm to, to ride on his shoulder because he believes that we should confront them head on. Hmm. Because I don't, as I don't we think all Deacon's know, relaxed enough to take you up on that, unfortunately. That's his call. But as we all know, with, with the ladies in waiting, there's so many lists of just things you do not do. And a, a breach of trust is at the top of that list. That's just, it's, it's distasteful. Reprehensible. <laughs> well, is it, it's repugnant. As they're, board, as they're boarding the, the boat, I'm hearing uh, the story of the ladies in waiting as they're going up the gangplank. Tambor stands alone with his hand on the railing by the gangplank, just kind of looking at the boat, bobbing back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and he puts both of his hands on the rail and he just pukes right in the water. But as he does so, he feels a little bit better. And uh, if, if any of his uh, bandmates had seen, they would be surprised because they've never seen him with a weapon before in his life. He actually like reaches down in his bag and finds this kind of medium-sized Warhammer, and uh, just puts it back on his uh, little strap he's got on his on his back, huh. and he heads up onto the boat. All right. 
All right, ready for battle. Okay. Um, so I assume you all uh, go across onto the gangplank and head onto the boat. Um, all right. So uh, if, if if any of you have ever seen a riverboat, you know, I kind of picture it that way. But it's uh, it's made of like a dark, um, almost uh, almost blackish wood. Um, except for the, uh, the outside, the, uh, the actual hull of the ship has a lighter wood. So that helps the, the lettering and the, the image of that laughing cleric stand out. But as you get onto the boat, the flooring is made of kind of like a zebra wood type feel. So it's like, got like a nice little, uh, stylized pattern and grain to the wood as you, as you approach. Like the you, parquet floor. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Like that. And so it, you, you stand on it's a very expensive boat. <laughs> So you you and and you know from the history that it's it's one of the oldest out here on the on the uh, on the river, and so you you step onto the boat and you're you know again you're hearing people you're hearing music, um, give me who who'd be kind of looking around and how do you, how are you guys in uh, checking this place out? Uh, um, Ramon would be looking for where the Elysian axe burner stuff is coming from, assuming that the three would be together. Okay. So that would be his focus. Got it. All right. <clears throat> I'm probably going to be poking my nose and anything and everything just to try to kind of figure out what in the world is going on overall. Right. And Sibylin will just be doing the kind of beady eyes, looked around, cloaked figure thing. Okay. Well, I'm following uh, this so, behind him. yeah. So if you guys want to do perception checks, if you guys are teaming up at all to give one another advantage, you can do that however best you'd like to do it. I'll help Grimaud since I'm okay. I'm furthest back. Uh, or I guess Sibilant's in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. I'll help whoever's in front of me, so I, I'm just kind of looking around them. Okay, so Sibilant, you can roll with advantage. Um, Deacon and Grimaud, are you helping each other somehow? I feel like we're probably tag teaming this a little bit. Okay, so who wants to roll a lead with advantage? Uh, I'll go ahead and do so. Perception, I'm guessing? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so Deacon and Lady Sibilant, perception with advantage. Ah, there you go. Hey. Didn't even need it. All right. Um, so I think Sibylin, I think you you notice one thing for sure. And that is as you're kind of flowing into this, you know, like you're kind of like gracefully moving into uh, onto the ship. You look up at one of the uh, uh, kind of ornate looking overhangs that uh, basically is kind of like this is, you know, floor two is up above you and that's where people would walk. But up above you, you're seeing like this beautiful carving. It has inlaid um, iron and brass and, and, and uh, uh, somehow metallurgically possible, they have blended in copper and other kinds of metals into this to kind of make it look almost kind of like the zebra wood at your feet, but metallic. And... As you look at this, you also are seeing little, like, um, cornucopia shapes throughout. And you're hearing that this is where the music and the sound of people are coming from. But it doesn't sound like it's coming from a speaker. It actually sounds live. Um, and uh, I think you probably recognize the work of Krim uh, when you see it. Uh, now, Deacon... Because you're kind of in a different perspective, and maybe you're kind of looking around, checking windows, that sort of thing. I think that you're able to kind of poke and head up above one of the sills to the first window on this first floor. And you look inside, and all you see is an empty, like, uh, dining area and a bar that's inside. So you have, like, a bar on one end, like, towards the stern, kind of where you're kind of coming aboard. And then as you look forward, there's the, the bars back there and you look forward, there's all these tables and stuff with uh, nice little candle lit uh, yeah. lamps and stuff like that all on the tables. But there's nobody here in this first floor. And you're kind of mm -hmm. like you're you're looking in the window and you're kind of like rubbing at the at the window a bit so you can kind of brush away the steam or whatever that's kind of like built up there or condensation. And you you kind of do that. And as you do that, you feel a little bit of cold on your on your hand. And it you, you touch the window again and you notice that it's pretty cold on the other side. Which is why there's condensate on the outside. Mm. Interesting. Air conditioning. It's wonderful. <laughs> so what is the evening like? Um, it's a bit humid. It's probably like 80, 85 degrees with well, maybe 90% humidity. 
So it's a little bit less here. Except right for lizards, so it feels great. Lizards, yeah, uh, reptiles. Okay, I'll give you that. You're yeah, all good with this. You're like, oh, so good. Except for the orc. The orc's not having a great night at all. Yeah. Uh, he's still a little better. He, he purged some. He, he did. Purged yeah, a bit. Yeah. 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 Get those toxins out. So, I mean, but you at least get a breeze off of the river, which is nice. So that kind of helps with it. It's basically okay, exactly um, like outside here right now. I want you to feel at home. It's, it's, it's been a lot like that recently in, in my area. We've had a lot, a lot of humidity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Vermont's be looking for a staircase up. Okay. Um, yeah. I think there's uh, um, over on either side, when you come across the game plank, so like when you're moving on to the boat, you have the stern on your left and the bows heading towards your right. And as you come in, there's the overhang where you can walk through, but then halfway there, there's a little um, portion that comes outward and a spiral staircase that goes up, a wrought iron staircase that goes upwards to the next level. How many stories is this? Is it three? Uh, three stories. Mm -hmm. And that above deck, or is that including the deck? Um, this deck is the first floor and then second and third. Well, Tommy, Tommy or someone had said top floor when he was mm, um, the contract. The contract, yeah. I think, that we found. Oh, is it the contract? <clears throat> um, okay, I just, I'm still trying to get a, a mental image. Is it kind of like a tiered take? Like, are the floors smaller as you go up, or is it just like one square shape with three levels in it? It's a three-story building on top of a flat raft. Okay. <laughs> on a raft. You know, I would think of, you know, again, kind of thinking of riverboats and how they are how they look. So, yeah, pretty much that. Everything kind of has the same square footage on each floor. Okay. So it's a block. It's, okay. I like the birthday cake, birthday cake metaphor because it got what I was trying to get yeah. um, across. So that that will be Grimond's direction because he remembered the top floor thing. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. <laughs> um, That's the first news, though, right? <laughs> That's gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of the night. Let's now. Go. He's back. He's back. Sorry. Welcome back, Redbeard. We're going upstairs. Yep. I think as far as the stairs are concerned, I will actually scramble up your arm now. I want to see up the <laughs> <No, faster>. stairs. <laughs> okay. Walls on take... the with stairs. So, yeah. So, okay. So, you guys are making your way up. You've got your Deacon backpack on. Uh, ready to go. Or shoulder stole. I don't know. Yeah. So, Other you guys are... So much uh, sitting is like standing... I'm like holding this side of standing, the standing with like leaning on my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interestedly, like, um, yeah. So, so where, uh, where Don't do you? Don't fidget. So, are you? Are, are the other two, Tambor and uh, and Sibilant, are you guys heading yeah. upstairs too? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. All right. Um. So yeah. So you guys make it up to the next walkway uh, that leads around the boat, uh, the next deck. Uh, what do you do? You've got, again, windows kind of paneled outward. Um, you're seeing kind of that condensation that's like thick on the uh, on the glass. I'm going all the way up. Okay. So you can just, con you don't even stop. You continue all the way up. Okay. No. All right. Uh, yeah. You get to the top deck. Um, and there's, there's a bit of a broader walkway up here that leads backwards so that there's kind of a place to gather in the rear or in the stern of the ship. And then also a place to gather on the, on the bow. So you have places to kind of look out onto uh, the city and that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, you have that, the, the roof here is a lot taller and it kind of comes up to a, like a little bit of a sweeping peak at the top. And uh, the windows are taller here. They're almost floor to floor to ceiling uh, windows along the side. Oh, so it's not like open. No, it's not open at the top. No, it's got it's it's covered. I was I was picturing open for some reason, but we're cool. Uh, I hope hopefully I did not mislead you, but no, it is quite It'll, sealed. They, no, it I'm is quite sealed. Um, so yeah, they don't do they don't do riverboats in Pennsylvania, man. <laughs> much ice. Much ice. Technically, they do in Pittsburgh, but I'd like to point out that I don't live in Pittsburgh. That's right. Because We've already discussed how far away this is. No, I believe everyone in Pennsylvania lives in Pittsburgh. Oh, That's little known fact. 
Or Philly. Don't say that because the Philly fans will maul you. They're scary. They're the scary. I can actually hear people busting the blister packs on batteries right now so they can start whipping them at you. So I just <laughs> start ducking right now if you can. Um, Better watch out because somebody will be on you too. That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I actually think there was batteries. There was a battery incident in, in Pittsburgh too, but no, most of the that's rock not and game content. I have to edit this out now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all, right. Riverbed, riverbed, riverbed. all right. So, talking about batteries, let's Is recharge the scene. Oh no! Um, so, yeah. So yeah. So you have these Florida Florida link ceiling uh, uh, windows, Florida ceiling windows. That um, they're they're <laughs> frosted around the edges, but you can kind of see the interior a bit, and you see like rows of seats that are kind of like this, like going upwards and then towards a big stage in the back, and you see like uh, you see three figures moving around there in the through the window. This one has condensation too. Oh yeah, for sure. Crap. Well, it's less of a problem for me, but I don't know about Sybil. Meh. I mean, I, I <laughs> She's seriously off. don't know about your biochemistry going on there. I think I'm We're not technically cold blooded. I'll go wipe it so we can look in. All right. So you uh, you step over to the window. And um, yeah, you, you're kind of like. Kind of moving, swiping it. And you see on the stage. Um. Yeah, well, who do you think you see on the stage? Well, Hale and Alicia. Yeah. And All maybe three, three figures. Uh, Krim should be there too. Yeah, Krim is. Uh, he's standing on a couple of uh, of uh, large boxes that um, he's opened up, and you see the front end has kind of like spilled downward, and he's, he's standing on the very top one, but you can see on the inside of that box, it looks like he's got one of his contraptions is there. Um, and then he's kind of tooling around working with something on the top, uh, top portion that you can't see. And then Alician is, uh, currently, he's like, his back is to the window where you're standing and he's kind of just kind of running through some hammer-ons on his guitar. And you see like the, you can see like steam and smoke kind of coming from the back end of it where it vents some of the heat that he normally generates when he's playing so fast. And you, you see his mouth kind of like lolling and his tongue's kind of hanging out like over to the side. Um, as he's kind of just ripping through these scales. And um, you see the pale, um, Palatheria, is standing in the center stage, um, and she's just kind of standing quietly, and she's, she's, got her, uh, she's got her hands clasped together, and she's, she's kind of just like sitting there, or standing there, just kind of swaying a little bit. And she's, she's got her eyes closed, and she's looking down like this. But she's facing towards the, uh, towards the audience. Of which there is none. Every chair in here is empty. Really? Yeah. What time is it? Uh, about one thirty-ish, one forty-five, almost two. I'd say almost two eight. We, we're still hearing the sounds of an audience. Yes. Yeah, people. You know, the murmuring and clinking of things, and the uh, the sound of uh, music. You know, kind of gently playing and stuff, and over the top of the music, you can all you can also hear Alician kind of practicing his chords, um, and his his runs. Oh, you just said practicing. That's a GM tell right there. Well, you can you're, you're visually looking at him because he's not in his normal. You've seen him in his normal rocking stance, oh, okay. right? He's just okay. got his guitar and he's just kind of like. Are they wearing the the uniforms that they needed to return? Uh, yeah. So, out of, out of play, can I ask a question? Certainly. So, Tambor doesn't get tied up in the business side of things, but as a player, I'm just trying to understand. So, are they in breach of contract with Linka? Right now, by yes. Using the clothes with them by not showing up to their other gig. Well, they didn't have a gig for Linka. They just didn't show up. There's no yeah, place for them to have showed up. Yeah, they showed up. Showed up. Whatever. They yeah. yeah there's they should have. Um, but even if they got another gig, they were supposed to run it through whatever that dude was we talked to first. Right. That's so they're, 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 uh, they're two-time in Linka. 
I mean, it would, for all intents and purposes, yeah, that seems like what's happening. It honestly seems like they're two timing everybody at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because they had a deal with the coffee guy too, didn't they? Mm hmm. But we but don't he, know what the deal with Kazim was. He kind of brokered the deal with. Uh, well, mm -hmm. he, Kazim, brokered the deal with Five Strings. Slash. Slash. With Slash, yeah. And Slash brokered, yeah. it seems, a deal to use this Dude, boat. Here. Um, you know, Krim did something for Slash for in order for him to do this lucrative of a, of a contract. Right, right. Um, but yeah. Do they well, Grimond has already expressed off? his interest in confronting them. Less? Or more? Hmm? Did you say less interested, or...? No, I was asking, do they look odd? Like, do they seem, like, zoned out or anything? They... They look like they're prepping for a song. Like they're like they're they're prepping something. Crim's fiddling with something, trying to get it to work. He's really focused on it. Um, she's just kind of thinking. I mean, you you've watched her perform before, so it's not something you have to roll for. You. So you've seen her where she's like, she's getting into, she's getting into like, not character, but like just getting ready. She's just psyching herself up. Um, some people say that when they've passed in front of her while she's doing that, that she's whispering to all of the uh, the dead people the dead you know all of the ghosts and stuff she's talked to in the past she's like whispering to them as she's prepping and so they yeah, usually so steer performing for they usually steer clear of that they're just like no i have nothing want to do with that because usually you never know when she's going to start she just starts wailing she just lets out this huge shriek and then alicia knows to fall into play and Krim knows to trigger whatever needs to be triggered and then she, she starts is Yoko ono. she starts her set Leslie thinks it's a it's a ghost audience in there. She's actually singing to ghosts in there. Yeah. Good bit. Well, yeah. Leslie Possibly. thinks that Grimon doesn't care. <laughs> Draw that line. Yeah. Well, I'll let uh, I'll let, let Lady Sibylin take the lead. She seems prepared for an entrance. Um. Did anybody? I know that um. You guys are kind of looking and stuff now that you've kind of perceived the place. Did you want to investigate? And what do you, you know, do you want to just go, go in? It. It's up to you guys. Because, like I said, there's really no coercion involved. Gotcha. So, okay. I will investigate where I stand. I will not enter without. Oh, breaking up. Yeah, I couldn't really hear any of Sorry, that. Sorry, you're breaking yeah. up a little bit. I think so. she said, I'm yeah. investigating further. You're investigating further. Okay. Cool. She rolled investigation. Though, I think so. it was when you interacted with roll 20, it started giving you <laughs> skipping. That's probably what it was. Um, yeah, probably. Probably. There you see. You're I back. will not enter without my team, though. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm on, I'm standing on your shoulder, so we're right. coming. Anybody else want to do an investigation, or is Grimond the only one? I'll look around. We've got I just really want to make sure before situation. I proceed with what's there, I want to see if anybody else wanted to. Okay. I'm gonna keep my. I'm just gonna keep my eyes on Pale because I know her the best of the three. Okay. Um. All right. And then Sibilant, how about you? You're just kind of ready to go in. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on Pale. Okay. Um. I think with uh, uh, with what you're noticing, I think between the two of you, you both rolled the same anyway, right? Thirteen. I think uh, there's like a there's like a a seat a row of seats in the back. There's rows of seats, right? As you're looking into this again, it's kind of like veed forward uh, towards the stage ahead, and the stage is raised up like maybe uh, five, almost uh, almost ten feet up. As you have stairs that kind of lead up to it on either side, but um, in the back row there is a few s uh, stacks of boxy looking shaped things, and you look closer and you're like, yeah, those are books. And uh, a couple of the books are like left open, and you know one of the pages is kind of lolling back and forth, that sort of thing. Um, and I think you see uh, like there's something that catches your eye on this one, and just because we're in the finale, and I think that at least you got a ten or higher. Um, one of one of the pages you see kind of flipping back, you know, this way, has the same image of the uh, the stylized figure on the front of the laughing cleric is kind of emblazoned on that page, but you, there's, it's not a silhouette. There's actually definition to it. It's just, you're too far away to see what it is, but you can, there's actually a description there. Um, I think upon seeing that, I'm going to scramble down and go look at in more detail. 
Yeah, so you're going to sneak inside? I mean, we were already headed inside. Yeah, I mean, there's a door ahead of you that you could open up and go in. But I, before you got there, I wanted to make sure what you were seeing from the window, you got a chance to investigate. Okay. Um, so do you want to sneak in or are you guys just going to burst in, you know? <laughs> I feel like style. professional courtesy, I'm not going to do bursting. and But that's me. Got it. Is there going to be a stage door or somewhere... Yeah, the door, back. the doorways in the the doorway in is two big double doors in the back in the stern. So you kind of have to go back around and then come come at it from the bottom, or the the stern. But this door is what the back of the audience basically. Mm -hmm. That's where people would file in. You yeah. see, like through the double the double doors, there's like nice, beautiful stained glass windows. But um, uh, you can kind of see through there. There's like another spiral staircase up ahead of that. So there's probably accessibility from within the the ship's uh, quarters. So you guys heading in? Yeah, I think so. All right. Mm -hmm. Quiet and respectful, I'm assuming. Okay. I'm cool with that. For the moment. Yeah. All right. So we'll yeah, so later. We'll, uh, we'll bring you guys over. Is that the right one? Nope, that's not the right one. Next deck. There you go. All right. You guys should be able to see yourselves there. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. So, yeah, so there's the rows of seats. There's the spiral staircase that's ahead of you. And if you kind of scroll upwards, you'll be able to see the stage. Um, and I think as the doors open, uh, uh, Pelotheria's eyes open as well and uh, and see you. And uh, I think, you know, Elysian's kind of burning through something and then it stops. And then uh, Krim is like fiddling and, and whatever, and then looks up and sees you all. And I think when you open the doors, there's like this just cold wind that kind of like just passes outward. Um, and uh, somebody who's who's got a knack for Arcana, who has a knack for that? I mean, you're all magical, but I mean, is there any one of you that maybe kind of studies it a little bit more than the others? Not me. No. Not me. Sibilant? Um, it's not really a skill, like strength of hers, but I'll say she has a passing familiarity of it. Okay. I mean, you know, when you're doing bloodlines, Arcana yeah. comes into play a little bit. True. Yeah. Give me a, give me an Arcana check. Hey. Hello. All right. Um. Can I use my Bardic Inspiration? Uh, yes. yes. This is a perfect not opportunity. after it's been rolled. Yes, actually. Yeah. Well, really? Yeah, you have huh. to have already cast it on somebody. Before it really that. has to be cast because you decide when to use it. Yeah, oh, and, and then it's up to the person to use it. Well, um, I have, I have, I thought I, my character has something where uh, I am wrong. Go ahead. Well, check your character. If you find something on there, let me know, um, yeah. and I can, I can alter the description a bit. So, uh, so you, this that that cold wave just kind of passes over you, and I think you see. Uh, the cold isn't coming from any one of these figures here, but it is coming from the stage. And you notice that on the stage, there is a um, an area that's not really defined. It's kind of hard to see because it's obviously the stage is lifted up, but you see like va like a vaporous column kind of uh, rising upwards from the stage. And it's right behind the pail and next oh my to God, they are performing for ghosts. Or they're summoning something. Also possible. I'm going to scramble over and look at that, that pile of books to see what in the world was... Uh, it's a lot I of recognize. scramble, love. Okay. Right. So the books are right there where I pinged. I am small and lizard-like. I scramble. And nobody notices the lizard. The tambor little, leaps over the staircase. The <laughs> I just walked, I just walked I know, I'm there. kidding, I'm kidding. Um, Deacon, you, the first book that you saw that was kind of the pages were flipping around back and forth. Um, you know, maybe you kind of look at it and you see the cover has um, a big V that's been kind of like, uh, almost like in like a inlay of gold, a big V that's in it. And then subsuming over that V, the kind of like uh, embedded within it as an H. That's there as well. And uh, you open the cover 
and there's a, a word there. I don't know what languages do you speak? I speak common draconic and goblin. English. Draconic, English. draconic will work. Um, you see a name there, um, Vinayas Helene. Hmm. Vinayas Helene. So obviously owing to the VH. Yeah. Um, but that's uh, something we've heard before, is it? Um, sound I don't know. Well, unless he says it out loud, he's the one who's looking at the books. So. So I meant as a player. I was trying to remember. Um, so no, no, it's I. I butchered a name into this. Everybody's name is butchered from something. So. And I'll, we'll talk okay. about we'll talk about after game. <laughs> So, uh, so all I see is the name. Yeah, and there's a couple other books that are below that. Um, one is on musical history. Um, another one, uh, all of them have a symbol that's also on the back of the book that uh, represents the um, that noble house that you ran across, the Gilgirsu. Mm. So, yeah. Are you going to say anything to us, Deacon? Or are you going to uh, keep investigating? It's fine. I'm wondering. I mean, basically, what I found is that the books all have to do with the noble houses. Yeah. Um, well, if you remember, you visited that noble house, and that there were some yeah. books that were gone. So these these are those books, most likely. Yeah. Okay. And they have to do with the symbol. So they're and they something about the history of the noble houses is related to this boat. Right. Okay. Well, possibly. I will we'll see. I, that's a reasonable <clears throat> assumption. I'll come back over and mention my find. Okay. So, well, so you're you're kind of there at the books. You're looking through it. So let's kind of we'll pause there for a moment. And yeah, you guys are kind of fine. making your way in. Uh, Lady Sibylin is, of course, being much more dramatic about it. I need to update your name tag. I think that's where I'm having trouble. I'm gonna update that. Uh, Lady. How about Lady S? Oh, I think uh, she's just going to keep an eye on for a moment, but she's going to move up a little bit until she's within about 30 feet of a uh, pail. Okay. So I think, so uh, is there water making or anything your way, like making your way through of those chairs? Or anything around? Um, there's some like glasses that are kind of set aside, but making your way through these chairs is difficult terrain just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, okay. Just a head now, uh, heads up. So as you guys are making your way in the pail, like watches you approaching and she uh, she says, Why have you come? This is not your gig. Hell, we thought you were dead. We've been looking all over this town for you. You would not believe what we have been through trying to find you. What the hell? Uh, I'm going to cast a spell in the middle of this. Purely for pettiness. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to make yourself look like her again? No, I'm going to cast Mage Hand, use it to pick up a glass of water, and throw it in her face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> throw it in her face? <laughs> yeah. All right. Not like the um, whole glass. I mean, like, the water. Like, yeah, you know, I know what you meant. I, I got okay. you. Um, okay, I think that she's probably going to be ready for something like that. But let's... let's uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think okay, so I think like yeah, you grab the you you, you grab this glass and you uh, you you fling it towards her, and I think that uh, I think she <laughs> I think she picks up like there's like a music stand next to her or something like that, and I think she uses her own mage hand and grabs the mu the the stand and flings it in front <laughs> to like cra splash, uh, crack the glass, you know, or smash it. It's a scratch it. fight. Or a slap fight. Yeah, a little, little magical slap fight back and forth. <laughs> I like to think both of them are just standing there like impassively as though neither has any idea that what's happening. Like, oh, how how would ever someone ever do that? That's just that's just so rude. Lady Sibilant, I see that whatever hole you were hiding in, you've decided to crawl out of. I to see you've exited whatever drug haze you were in to make it onto the ship, but you know you're here in breach of contract, my dear. I know it's difficult for you elves to keep track of such things. Well, 
If I had time to let your little pet read through those books, you'll realize I'm honoring a better contract. A sibling will just casually glance over at Deacon to see what he's talking about. So in, in the meantime, real quick, Gervon will stride forward until he's you know, a, a little ways in front of the stage and state simply, uh... he is not our pet. He is our equal. I so, say, yeah, I will have rejoined everybody, but I actually will be using message and sending individual bursts to each of the three of you so that I don't have to say it out loud and just be like, hey, it's the books of the noble houses. These books are all about the noble houses and like mention the name of the one that I did pull from. Can I say that again, please? Well, it's, it's owned, again. sorry, it's owned by the noble houses, but it's mentioning... Jeff, I have to step away for but, um, just a moment. Yeah, I'm relaying something. that information basically to us as a group without making it to the whole. Can you please say the name again? Go Gears. No, <laughs> the VA. Oh, v Vinayas. But thank you, Jason. Vinayas Helene. So you want to do like a history check on that? No, because I know what it is. But yes. Oh, do tell as a fellow player. No, you not. will not. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was murdered from? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, I'm sure she does. And I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't realize it before, earlier. <laughs> well, that's why I didn't um, reveal the name until now. <laughs> hold on. I'll it? roll, I'll it? roll a, a, a knowledge -ness. Would that be history? or History will work, yeah. History would be fine. Can I rock the performance? Mm, no, history. It's will... probably, if it's anything like the source, it's probably not the kind of music that my lady would have listened to. Probably not. With, but with her parents knowing at least. Let's see. Let's see what you get. All right. All right. Um, uh, I see a nine. What was the other one? Uh, Twelve. Oh, 12. So you got a ten total. They keep rolling um, behind things. I think. Oh, you're looking for the dice. I always just look in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was on the the character sheet. Oh, so and the character it rolls back. under the character sheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, okay. So when he mentions that name, I think that you there's a uh, there was a time that you and your lady, uh, maybe your lady, might have had to go to a studies class of some kind and on history of Sapphire Harbor, that sort of thing. And there is a, uh, a, there was mention of this name um, based on a really, really old text, an old Elvish text. And, you know, who knows about elves sometimes, but there was an old Elvish text out there that said, um, uh, spoke highly of a figure of this type. And... Um, Elvis dies. Nice. <laughs> I stopped reading the chat. Um, but yeah, they spoke Sorry. really highly or, or in reverence of this particular figure. But it's eh, she wasn't really paying attention that well to it. And since she wasn't paying attention that well, then she didn't really pass on a lot of information to you. But it seems like it was some kind of a revered figure from the ancient past of this location. She was exchanging notes with her friend. Mm-hmm. In regards to the rather attractive uh, teacher for the class. Perfect. Of him, I heard much. Sure. <laughs> That's good. Um, That's real good. That's real good. <laughs> uh, how much do we want to do without Patrick? Are you doing okay over there, Jeff? I'm doing great. You know, if we want to, if we need to like edit anything out, it's okay. I can always okay. take care of it. Well, in that case, can I ask a quick question that's completely unrelated to everything? Please. What is Keegan? Keegan. Um, Your Twitter name. Oh, my, uh, it was my first, uh, my first, like, when I really got serious about playing D&D, it was my first character that I ever had in a long form campaign. Um, he was a barbarian that at, I took him all the way from second level to 14th level in three in a three five three five game and Very at nice. 10th level he lost his left hand Oof. and uh but uh, what did he do about that 
Uh, like anybody else dead. well no like anybody else he had a weapon attached to it so in this case it ended up being a shield um but that's uh, pretty cool yeah so yeah he was a he was a you know the traditional noble savage and stuff but it was kind of cool to kind of it was the first time i ever had an in-depth character that i wrote a lot of stories for and that i've probably had a version of him in every single game i've ever run um and uh oh. yeah yeah for sure so yeah that's kind Leslie of... Leslie was my first character, and that's my my stage my stage name. A little in, a little too into this game, I guess. My screen name for most things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's where it came from. Okay, I've been meaning to ask you that because I got really confused when you stopped being Jeff. Wait, oh. I get it now. GSP Keegan GS is Game Store Profits. That's what's going on. Yep. Okay, all right. Yep. Put and that was back when I thought all I was going to do for was GSP. I thought that was it. I thought, like, oh, okay. Every other week, I, I could do recording. Actually, listen to that yet? Yeah. They suck a GN, man. Yeah, but it's been a really weird season in my life, and I haven't. Well, you know, I haven't been on the recording for a long time. Um, yeah. And I, I wouldn't mind going back to it, but it's just board games really aren't my thing, and they mostly do board games and. Yeah, you know, I, I, it would be kind of cool just to kind of stop in at the end when they make the turn and they start talking about theological stuff. And I was like, I don't mind doing that. Um, and I don't mind like challenging Mike on stuff. I like having, having fun with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't feel like I talk intelligently enough about board games to like keep up with them. Yeah. But you talking about, uh, RPGs. And your enthusiasm for them was what pushed me over the edge into starting to try them. So I'm, there is value I'm there. Very I'm very honored. Happened. I'm very honored that's the case. Thank you. That's cool. I had my appetite whetted by a few other things, and then you pushed me over. So Cool. Man. Go, Jeff. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Hey, oh, my gosh. I just realized something. What? You were the first Jeff I've ever known. That's really? that's amazing, actually. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those names that I never took seriously for some reason. It's just Jeff was <laughs> was, was my go to name for just random crap. You know, some people use like Bob or something. It's always Jeff. And then I saw the the uh, Eddie Izzard sketch where it's Jeff Jeff to Jeff, born on Jeff, the twenty Jeff, 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 nineteen Jeff to Jeff. Yeah, yeah. And which means you know I could take it even less seriously. And I was like, I was thinking one day like. I don't think I've ever actually known a Jeff. There you go. Now I do. There you go. <laughs> now you're going to be my automatic PC. This is Jeff, the PC. I like it. Yeah, dark hair and a little bit of a beard. A little bit of a beard. All right, so I'm gonna attack. Sorry. And, uh, well, I just don't think I don't think the blood. blood is enough. I, don't, I mean, the blood's all over the floor. You're slipping no, we need everywhere. The blood spray. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get the spray in. There. Oh, hi. So, Sorry, Patrick. We were we were talking about a plan. Do mm -hmm. you have the coagulant spell? I'm just kidding. All right. So, <laughs> so we stopped. We stopped. We effectively stopped. Right yeah, yeah. This is why you need prestidigitation as a bard because it gets the stains out. That's right. I had prestidigitation as a bard. <laughs> yeah, I was an idiot and I didn't take that. I do have it. Hello. Um, okay, so I'm going to make like wild gestures so that I know to look for this in the recording. And then uh, we'll be back where we need to be. Okay, so you've got to bring in the the, the stain conversation. No, yeah, I do like that. Yeah. No, um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so you know, you're you're kind of you rolled that history check, and you kind of have that a little bit of a background on it. Um, what's what's next? Deletion has moved forward onto the stage, and he's kind of laughing at the comment that Deacon isn't a pet, and he's like, and he just kind of he's kind of lift, licking his lips, and he's making that null. You know, hyena laugh. <laughs> oh man, come on! We're all gonna be like, uh, you know, treating him as little little fella. I mean, come on now. I mean, uh, you're still a brother of mine, right? I mean, why are y'all here? What's what what's happening here? What's 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 going on? And he's like looking. He's kind of stooping down a bit so that he can be the same height as the pale. Uh, hey, 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 you guys ain't here to mess up our gig, man. This is the once in a lifetime type thing. Uh, come on now. What is your gig? He, he kind of looks, he's about to open his mouth and then he clamps it shut. I mean, and, and you know, the power of a hyena's jaws, you, it's like an audible clamp throughout the entire auditorium here. And he looks over at the pail and, uh, 
Um, she 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 kind of smirks at him, and then looks over at the rest of you. Well, now, that is for us to display and to perform. If you would like to be part of the audience, then you're more than welcome. But no session work tonight, my friends. We are gonna die. And uh, Krim is still on the top of this stack of, of contraption or whatever and still kind of working and fiddling. He keeps looking up and he's looking down and he just kind of keeps working. He is. Is he just checking things out or is he actually looking at them or at us? He's okay. looking at them, looking at you guys, and then going back to his work and like fiddling and working. He's 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 okay. got sweat yeah. on his brow as he's like, you know, just hands are moving and stuff. He's switching tools out and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll look up a pail and ask her, so when does the show start? Oh, it's, uh, it has already begun. It's uh, been in the making for at least 2,000 years. I don't see any audience, though. So, like, where are you guys playing for? He will be here. He will come home. Called it summoning. And like, Juan has no idea. Kind of answer, like to that effect, like you see the vapor behind her, that kind of misty column that uh, Lady Sibilant spotted, I think it was, right? Um, it's You can kind of see it now. It's kind of like this. It's a big column that's probably like about 10 feet across that's kind of starting to coalesce and, and rise and start to swirl a bit. Um, and you actually, you, you, you're looking at it for a moment and you're thinking you actually see musical notes dancing around in the vapor um but then you know you kind of your eye draws back to the, back to the pail so you were gonna say so he he who i'm like looking back at the the cloud behind her what do you who are you talking about who am i talking about you haven't been in it since the beginning like i have i i am bringing the music home I am bringing all of it home. I look back at Lady Sibyl. I'm like, what is this lunatic talking about? Alicia, why don't you just tell us what's going on? And I flick my tongue, and I'm casting Suggestion. Oh, dang. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, Sorry to short circuit this. <laughs> no, no. This is actually pretty good because he is in his brain he's going to be rolling a disadvantage on this um so that is a wisdom check right mm -hmm. and what's my target 15 all right public roll at disadvantage there we go yeah he, he fails that <laughs> and i so like you, that disadvantage so you're you're uh you're, you're 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 kind of like doing this thing and you see the pale pale as she's, you know, in, in anger, kind of seething as she tenses her jaw. Uh, she probably recognizes a little bit of what, what's happening. But then Elysian's, like, been kind of, you know, his mouth got clamped shut. And his jaws have been kind of working. And he's been like... <laughs> and he's, like, looking over at her and then looking at you and looking over at her. And he's, it's, it's, we're breaking him back. He's the father of all rock. He's coming back here. We're going to bring him back here. And we're going to put on the biggest show. And we're going to be the best band. Come on now. You don't want to see the father of rock, right? He's going to be back. He's coming back thousands of years. This is what it's all been about. Man, oh, my gosh. I'm another... And he's, like, leans back and he just starts... Boing, and you like hear the, the 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 entire room is filled with this low e strum of a power chord and it's the inception chord and i think krim is launched off of the platform that he's standing on as that mechanism opens up and starts just pulsating that note out and Alicia is like cranking up the volume on his guitar and Krim goes flying over, you know, kind of like away from uh, away from the contraption over in this direction. And we'll just say the contraptions there. Um, yeah. And so he kind of lands over this unceremoniously on his butt. And does he look like he's hurt or phased? He was surprised because he was in the middle of working. Um, but I think I'd, this would probably be a good point for initiative maybe 
Unless you guys are, are you guys going to fight or what are, you, what are you doing? Let me ask that first. What are you guys doing? I, I, I was going to be dramatic, but I'll wait to see what the rest of the group wants to do. <laughs> All right. So, um, based on what I picked up since I walked out, they're basically trying to summon somebody and they're being butts Father about Rock. it. And they said they're the greatest band in the world, which is nonsense because. And they've been insulting me about both my stature and my uh, status as an individual, so. Ramon does not support that. Um, Can we do, like, a history check or something so that we know anything about the Father of Rock? Uh, Yeah, who else wants to do? Because you've already attempted it. Yeah, you didn't the name was. So I'd say, yeah, anybody else wants to to make an attempt on that, they can. I'll try it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Not, I did not get it. Wow. Get the this bad rolls out of the way. Just get the both bad things out of the that way. I was paying attention to. Oh my gosh. All the bad rolls. <laughs> well, what the heck? I'll just roll it. Tambor, the unrelenting, and the foolish. Let's see. Use your inspiration. No. <laughs> like you can't do it on your you can't do it on yourself. I can you. use I use my inspiration yeah, on Tambor. Take that away from me. Nah. Okay. All right. I want him to have advantage. Well, on you could give Actually, him bardic inspiration. Oh, that's true. Oh, you didn't no, even use my bardic inspiration for my it. dramatic idea. Um, you can, yes, if you want to cast bardic inspiration. But I think you guys have cast a couple spells that might initiate initiative at this point. So, history check, Tambor. You, I think there was this one evening where you were again blitzed off your blitzed off your gourd, and. Uh, there was an an old guy. It was a dwarf, and you know, through his heavy Scottish brogue and his fiery red beard and the drum that he constantly beat, you you heard a tale that he told of uh, these these uppity elves who thought they knew the history of music. He says, everybody, everybody knows that music has come from the mountains and deep within where the drums beat loud, just like Drogan's drum beats loud. And he starts like whapping the drum. But they only tell the story, these elves, of a place that was here before Sapphire Harbor. Who cares what was here before Sapphire Harbor? This is the place to be. But they said there was some kind of place here. The elves, they danced around the water, that sort of thing, and they pledged their fealty to some stupid man who had the, the hands of rock, the, the, the music that came from his fingertips. Some idiot story. I don't believe it at all. And then I think the last thing you kind of remember is the name Vanias Helene. And he's like badly pronouncing it as, as Vanis Halen. Oh. There we go. I feel so like dumb. I, said, I feel so dumb now. Anyway. I think it's great. No, I love it. I love it, Jeff.